Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to kind of start by giving you the why behind one on ones and why they're valuable um, and, you know, the, the things that you can benefit from by using them and if in how assembly can help you accomplish a lot of those goals. Um, so I'll start by sharing. So there's kind of two sides to the one-on-one, -on -one, right? Like we have, and there's a third use case as well, which I'll touch on in a second, but it's generally one-on-ones are managers and direct reports or direct reports to managers. Um, if your company or if you as a manager already have a system of one-on-ones, um, Assembly can help you uh, enhance those one-on-ones and make them more structured and efficient. But if you don't have one-on-ones, these are some of the benefits of of using them and or implementing them. So managers getting thoughtful feedback about yourself from your direct reports and about the company and about the work that your direct reports are, are working on. Uh, establishing a consistent pattern of check-ins. Um, there's ways, I'll show you how assembly can kind of help you track those week over week or bi-weekly or however your cadence is. Tracking that over time and providing some sort of uh, accountability for yourself and your direct reports. Um, easily established structure. So these are scheduled, these are automated, these are the same structures week over week, again, to help you track over time how things are changing. Um, accountability and a performance review look back. So like your accountability for making sure that your, your direct reports and yourself, but your direct reports are accountable for their work and um, making sure that you're tracking their performance. It gives you that paper trail for them to look back at it. And then it saves you time. Um, and I'll provide you a little bit of an anecdote uh, for how it's helped me and my manager save time. And then for direct reports, um, if there's anything that you aren't really able to dive into via Slack or email, um, you know, consistently getting help on roadblocks, like, and opportunity for questions, asking your manager what, you know, things that you might not be able to dive into. Uh, this is a really great opportunity for you to um, use your one-on-ones to dig a little bit deeper and just this dedicated time. Um, I know everybody's really busy all the time. So having these one-on-ones uh, just really make sure that you get that time in with your manager and your direct report. So overall, we would just want to track your sentiment and your confidence over time um, to make your direct reports feel valued and heard and feel like they're growing. And then as managers, for you to also be accountable to making sure that your direct reports have what they need and growing yourself as a manager. So you're all, if you're familiar with the, the main feed, um, I'll show you a, in, in just a second how to build one-on-ones. Um, we have a few templates. So if you're familiar with our template gallery, um, we have the first templates that you see is a one-on-one -on -one with direct report, one-on-one -on -one with manager. These are, these are very similar, but they're slightly different in the questions that they ask. So if you're a manager and you're establishing a one-on-one -on -one with your direct report, you'd want to use the one-on-one -on -one with direct report template. But if you're a direct report and you're like, hey, I want to start, you know, we want to empower direct reports to also establish these cadences with their managers. So um, if you're a direct report looking to set something up with your manager, this is a template that you can use. And they're both fully customizable. Um, so if the questions in there are not completely tailored to your liking, I'll show you how to customize them. Um, and then uh, the third use case that I alluded to earlier is if you have you know one-on-one -on -one with a peer, like a check-in with somebody on your team, um, it's a similar opportunity for you to check in and have some sort of a structure as well for those meetings. So, um, Something that I do want to pose for all of you, um, kind of a way for us to interact and something that I can um, incorporate into this demo is if any of you have any questions or like topics that you usually discuss in one-on-ones and you want to go ahead and throw them into the chat, um, Katya will collect them and then I'll kind of look at them as I'm building this and show you how you can add those blocks into the templates. So um, if anybody does have any great examples, please feel free to share. Um, it's really valuable for us to kind of see what are the important touch points for you and your direct reports or you and your managers. So feel free to throw them into the chat. And even if, um, even if it's past the time when I am um, have built these templates and shown you how to do it, we can, we can talk about them. 
and I can show you how to add them in by editing them as well. Cool. So uh, creating a one-on-one, -on -one, let's just go with the one-on-one -on -one with direct report. All right, so if you see what just happened, so I clicked one-on-one -on -one with direct report, the, the template is already built. So like if you wanted to change nothing else in it, you have that flow already. All you have to do is share it with whomever your direct reports are. And I, let me back up for a second, actually. So there's two ways that you can implement this. Um, you can have one 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 on one template for that you use with all of your direct reports. And I'll show you how to differentiate that with the sharing process. Or if you have a slightly different structure with different direct reports, you can create individual one on ones for each of those direct reports. So I'll show you the difference between that as well when it comes to the sharing of this. But for now, let's let's set a schedule after this, but let's let's go in and, and work on the content. So we have um, four questions that we provide out of the box are asking your direct report, what are their top priorities? So the person who's filling this out is the direct report. So that's this is in the from the um, persona of there, the direct report. So we have here are my top priorities at the moment. So as a direct report, here's what I'm focused on. Um, and then, yes, and then, um, asking the direct report, how as a manager, can you better help them accomplish their goals? How confident, so a great block to use in this is a scale and that provides you kind of this week over week, uh, tracking of how your direct reports are feeling. So you can make this one to 10, you can change the question a little bit. Um, but this is a great objective way for you to see over time how your direct reports are feeling. Um, Cause you can, you can ask them an open-ended question or any other format, how they're doing, but like, this is a very objective, like, okay, they've been at fives for, you know, multiple weeks. Now they're down to a four or three or a two, like what's going on. Let's look into this. Or if they've been at a, you know, a low, lower number for an extended period of time, that's something for you to really be mindful of as a manager to see like, where, how can we make this number go up? So scales are great. How confident do you feel like you have the support necessary to do your job this week? Whether that's from the manager enabling you to do that or just you know other resources, other team members um, giving your direct report what they need. And then how engaged are you feeling at work this week? So like how, how excited are they about their work? How meaningful do they find their work? Like, are they super engaged? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy to be here or I'm kind of removed just doing my job, getting a paycheck type thing. So this is a way you can finesse the wording however you'd like. Um, other things that I can show you to add in. So we can, I'm just gonna add in some other questions that are like we use here at assembly within various one-on-ones in different teams. So another open-ended is what have you accomplished this week? And I'm getting a little bit of a ahead, but for those of you who have used our notebook before, I'm gonna kind of show you how our notebook and our one-on-ones kind of come together where you can reference your tasks within your one-on-one. -on -one. So um, put a pin in that for a second and come back to it. So what have you accomplished this week? So, you know, if you have had multiple projects in flight or multiple things, just kind of providing a way for you to show everything that you've accomplished this week. For me personally, I forget a lot about what I've done throughout the week because there's a lot happening, but I use my notebook to kind of reference all of things that I've accomplished. So again, I'll show you how to do that. Another great question. What do you plan on accomplishing next week? So you have like, this is everything that I've accomplished this week. And then a plan for the following week to hold yourself accountable. Um, and understandably things change. Like for myself, I'll say, I wanna work on something next week and then other things come up, but it's just another, a good way to track like, oh, am I getting off task? Am I getting interrupted? Like all of these things, like this is what I plan on doing. This is what I accomplished. If there's discrepancies, um, also understanding why that happened is really useful. So. Um, we have, so I'm a product manager, and one of the questions that we have within our one-on-ones in our team is more product-specific questions. So at, on a product team, we ask, 
did you talk to any customers this week? What were your customer learnings? You can also make this, like if you wanted to track it in a different way, if you wanted to make it a little bit more objective and tracking it using our analytics, you could have it be um, a drop down. How many customers did you talk to? And you can have it be zero to one, two to four, whatever your range is, five to 10. Um, that's one way for you to more objectively measure um, over time. Um, what And that will manifest itself in, in the analytics for your in the insights for your flow. So um, another great question that we have. Um, so we have this question up here about how can I support you in your short-term and long-term goals as your manager? Um, there's other ways that you can ask that too. Um, something that we've seen used in the past is like as a manager, what can I start, stop, keep doing? So another way, it's kind of, uh, you see this a lot, start, stop, keep doing. Not everybody loves it. I find more so like the, the start and keep doing is something that we use more often. Um, but just another way for you to ask that question. Um, and then the one thing that, so I'll kind of tell you why this is also important to do it this way. But one thing that um, we enable you to do is kind of deep dive into a specific topic during your one-on-one. -on -one. So anything you want to deep dive in during our one-on-one. -on -one. And the reason this block is super helpful and important is that everything else that your direct reports have answered thus far, you don't have to review this really synchronously. Like you can see this and if there's anything in your one-on-one -on -one that you wanna talk about, from those questions, you can, but you can also use this time to deep dive into something in the one-on-one -on -one because you have all of those other answers already. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a second when I show you. So we've got the blocks, we've got the general format. I'm duplicating some things here, but it doesn't always have to be this long. I'm just keeping the current blocks. And you can also move the order around, you can change it um, however you'd like. So we'll go to this. Now, kind of that's the content. And if you want to work out the content first and then figure out the scheduling later, that's totally fine. But we're going to do both right here. So one-on-ones, if you're doing it, um, if you have multiple direct reports and you're doing uh, an individual one-on-one -on -one for each, you can schedule the date and time around um, the general window from when those one-on-ones are happening. And you can even do this if you have multiple direct reports using the same one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll talk about privacy and stuff in a second. But let's say um, you have a one-on-ones, you typically do your one-on-ones like on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So let's say today is Thursday, let's have this start on Monday. And if you have a one-on-one -on, -one on Wednesday, well, we can even make this on a Tuesday. And it's going to be weekly on Tuesday. Let's have it start at 9 a.m. Um, we're in the, on the West Coast, so we'll have it be Pacific time. And then there's a few ways that you can configure this to stay open um, so that to make sure that your direct reports have uh, plenty of time to answer this. So this trigger is essentially what will notify and prompt your direct reports to answer this. They'll receive an email and they'll receive an in-app notification and some in-app treatment um, here, which I'll show you in a second um, for and making sure that they know that they have something to work on, something to answer. Um, it's more so just like a, an awareness around it. You can leave it open all the time if you want, um, or if you wanna make sure that they answer it within this specific period of time and you don't wanna leave it open. My recommendation would be, you know, you can leave the trigger open for like three days, but I would also allow them to answer it anytime. So if one-on-one -on -one shift and you don't feel like adjusting the schedule, um, you can have it be answerable at any time. So the direct report can answer it on their own time and not be forced to answer it only within this window. And if they miss it, they can't answer it. So this is a great safety net for this specific use case. So you can use the trigger as a notification method and then answer anytime is really like, yeah, here's when we're notifying you to answer this. But if you happen to answer it outside of that window, you still can. So we've got the trigger figured out. Um, let's say um, 
with, you know, if if I'm doing a a one on one and you want to write in the direct report's name, and you save it. So that's how you create it. If at any point you want to go in and edit it, you just go to the editor here. You can adjust the schedule. You can adjust the content. Very very easy. Um, the one thing that um, we'll touch on here next is how do you share this? How do you distribute this? Who are you distributing this to? So I mentioned two ways that you can do this. You can have the same one-on-one -on -one template and use it for all of your direct reports. And that means all of their responses will come into the same feed for you, but you can protect the visibility so that direct reports can't see other direct reports responses. So let's just say I'm doing this. I'm just doing this with one direct report. Um, this I'm just going to keep it as myself for the sake of this demo. But if I'm the manager, I would choose my direct report by, I would exit this out and have member is, and then pick anybody from here that's, you know, pick my direct report. But we'll just do this. I'm the participant. And then viewers. So the flow owner will always have visibility into the responses. So you will always be able to see everybody's responses. So if you're doing, uh, a, and participants will always be able to see their own responses too, but they can't see anybody else's if they're not configured as viewers. So my recommendation would be if you're doing one to many to have it just be owner only. So you will see all of your direct reports responses in the same place in the same feed but your direct reports will only ever see their own responses. So that's what owner only means. Um, if you were to have multiple participants, like all of your direct reports as participants, I would not recommend participants only because that means all participants can see all other participants' responses. So for, for safe bet, I would just do owner only here. And again, if I wanted to add another member, I could pick, you know, Alan here if there are, are two direct reports. And if I wanted to remove myself and just include other people, you know, I can pick anybody from this list and have that be the case. But for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna keep myself. So I can show you what participation looks like. Um, for this, um, I would not adjust the link access settings or the response settings. These are, if you want to more widely distribute, kind of like a Google Doc, if you want to widely distribute this to people within your organization or allow people externally to participate, this is where you go to change those link settings. But this is a very personal one-on-one -on -one within your company, a very specific subset of people. So keep the link access settings as they are by default, which is only the people or groups I select. And then response settings, um, I don't imagine you would want your one-on-ones to be anonymous, but just more so like a, a tip in general for you all to be aware of is if you want to make your flow responses anonymous or make them optional for anonymous, you can go here and change that. But again, for one-on-ones, it <laughs> doesn't really make sense to have them be anonymous, but just again, a, a contextual tip for you all for when you're looking at this share sheet. Okay, so we have this flow is ready to go. Um, I scheduled it to start on um, a Monday or Tuesday next week. So it's not gonna be triggered in here, but for the sake of this demo, um, I'm just gonna change this so that you can see, I mean, you could make it on demand. I wouldn't recommend that. That makes it very manual for you, but on demand just means that it runs whenever you say run. So I'll show you what that looks like, but I'm just gonna do it now. So you see what it looks like when there's a, a flow for you to answer. So you go run now. And if you're on a scheduled flow, you'll you won't have to click run now as a as the manager, as the owner of the flow, like it's all like set it and forget it. So um, but as a participant, I'm kind of showing you what your direct reports will see when they have something to answer. So they'll see if you go to my feed, they'll see that they have a flow to answer. That's the one-on-one. -on -one. Also, if they go to the one-on-one -on -one feed. They'll see that they have the flow to answer. They see what the due date is. Owners are the only ones that are ever going to see the share or remind button. So just your parts, your, your direct reports are not going to see this. And they won't see insights and they won't see the editor. Um, and then also we have this answer now. So whenever there is a flow, especially if you have multiple flows, um, it can get a little, you know, 
cluttered and we're side note we're going to be introducing some left drawer organization and um we'll talk about that in a later webinar but um for now we bring everything to the top in an answer now so whenever you have a flow that you're a participant in that you have not answered yet it gets surfaced to this answer now section so three ways directly within our app for you to know when you have something to work on and this will also be accompanied by an email that you, all of your direct reports will get as participants um something to also note is when I, let me just, these are all required. So let's just breeze through these for the sake of participating. I didn't make these required, but we didn't, they, you can make any block required. Um, test, test. Okay, so posted. And it shows up like this in the feed for you, the owner, to view the responses. And then the participant will also see the same thing. And you all can communicate during your one-on-one -on -one by replying to the post, creating notes, um, create action item, you know, using this as kind of a, a, a source of truth for you all to track feedback during the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then some of you may have noticed this if you are flow owners but we recently implemented response notifications so um one thing that you will see um in general uh, i can't show it to you here because um there, there's nothing with unreads right now but there's also an unread section so not just in the flows that you own but anytime somebody answers a flow and you haven't read the responses yet similar to answer now you get this unread section that kind of shows you when there's activity in a flow but to in, to further enhance that, if you're not like looking at your assembly, you'll get an email anytime somebody responds to your flow. So if you're kind of going about your day and your direct report answers and you see that you get an email from it, you're now notified whenever there's been activity in any flows that you own. So an, just another great way for you to be engaged and to understand when stuff's happening in the app um, instead of you having to find it for yourself in assembly. Um, okay, so I see that there are some crowdsourced questions coming in. And I just want to talk talk through them and I can kind of show you, let me end this early. So let's go back to content. I'm just going to delete. Um, just a heads up to you all. I don't know if you saw that modal pop up, but when you do add or remove blocks or update them, we tell you that that has an impact on your data, um, just because similar if you've ever sent out a survey in SurveyMonkey or Typeform, like you can't track, you know, week over week the progress on a question if the question has changed or been removed completely. So we will give you insights and we will still give you the data, but it the the data download will be versioned out. So if you changed it, you're not going to see all of it in one place. You'll see, okay, this is version one. This is the, the the next version, just so you can, we're not trying to combine questions that were not even the same to begin with. So just more so for your FYI, if you ever see that modal, that's just informing you that your data will change and, and that's okay. So some of the questions that we had, what should be my priority right now? So if you wanna add that in, another one, that's great. I like this one. Is there anything I shouldn't be spending time on right now? That's a great question. Like if your manager notices that you've been working on something um, and you can track this as well with like a daily standup flow, which would be, you know, we can walk through that in a separate webinar, but daily standups are a great way to track, like what are your direct reports working on? And if you're noticing something that they shouldn't be working on right now, this is a great way for you to surface as like, hey, I noticed in your daily standups you're working on this, or I noticed, you know, based on our other communications that you're working on this. Um, this is another great one. Here's what's on my to-do list. Should I add or remove anything? And again, I'm going to show you how tasks work in this. So we'll I'll publish this and we'll answer it using tasks. What's our team's priority at the moment? Love that. Giving you some visibility and making sure that what you're working on is tracking to the overall team goals. And then another one. Final one in the list so far. 
what do you want to be done before our next one-on-one? -on -one? These are great, great examples for how to use tasks as well. So I'm, I'm really happy that you all shared these. So let's just save this. So the next time any of your direct reports answer, if you've edited it, they're gonna see the new questions in there. They're not gonna have access to the old version and that's on purpose. So uh, just know when you do make a change, you can always change it back, but um, you have to go in and do that. You can't just like revert. So we're gonna come back to this in a second. I'm not gonna save this draft. So um, we have, for those of you who aren't familiar with the notebook, we recently launched a board view. And this is something that you can use to track your individual progress on tickets. So this is your own personal board. Um, we do allow you to create tasks and assign to other people. And I'll show you how to do that just very quickly as a, an aside for this. Um, but say I, you know, before we had this deadline view that organized your tasks based on when they were due. And that's great. That's very helpful, but that's not how people always work, right? If you have something that's due in a week, that might already be in progress, but there's no way to really provide that visibility in this view. So we added a board view. So let's say I want, I have something that's due in a week, task that's due in one week, but I'm working on it now, just to be incredibly vague for this. So let's say it's due on the 29th. Whoops. Okay, so we have this task and I say I'm working on it now. It's in progress. That's great. I can track this here. So whether I'm answering a daily standup or whether I'm filling out my one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to show you how to reference these tasks. And then if you're a manager and you need something from a direct report, say I need something, here is a task for my direct report. Let's say I need it by Tuesday next week. Let's assign it to Adam. So Adam is going to be notified um, that they have a task and know, like they'll be notified when the due date is and then they will. this will appear on their board. So this task will show up for them in their board view and they can track it however they want to track it through their board view. So. I'm not going to get too much more into notebook. Um, if any of you have any questions on this, you can always follow up with me after this. Um, but I'm going to show you how notebook works when you're answering a flow. So what should be my priority right now? Say, um, say you're, you know, asking, you're asking your manager what your priority, or if you know what your priority is right now, let's reference a task. Okay, let's say we have something here where it's like, here's a task for my direct report. This should be the priority right now. Anything I shouldn't be spending time on right now, let's just do this. Here's what's on my to-do list. Should I add or remove anything? Perfect example for notebook. Let's reference an existing task. Task that's due in one week, but I'm working on it now. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of show you some other ones that I have. And then I can also create a new task from here. Create new task from here and it will show up in my notebook. Great. So here's my to-do list. Your manager can see this. This is directly related to your tasks that you have in your notebook. Our team's priority, we can just test for this. What do you want to be done for your next one-on-one? -on -one? So that task that I created that, you know, if the manager created the task for the direct report, let's go back and reference that task. Here's the task for before our next one-on-one. -on -one. This is what I need you to do. I've, I'm already aware of this. Um, I can put this in here, post. So you'll see now that you have tasks that show up really nicely in here. And the beautiful thing about this is whenever the task gets completed, it gets updated directly in here. So you don't have to go in and be like, hey, I finished this. So I'm gonna show you right now, task that's due in one week, but I'm working on it now. You click the task, you're open, it's opening for the task, and then you can move it to the section. This is my task, so I can move it to whatever section I have. So it's in progress, great. Let's say I mark it as completed, I'm done. It shows up as completed. So at any point 
you or your manager can come back and reference this and say like, okay, it's already done. Like a very easy way for you to just check off your list. You can manage it this way, or you can manage it from your notebook. So if I had that task and completed another completed task, so I could move this, I can move it to completed here. And then that's another way for you to do it. And I could reference it back in there as a completed task. So um, just a really nice way for you to, uh, you know, get there. Um, so we have, you know, let's go back to this feed. So um, that's a great way for you to reference tasks. You can also do this in daily standup. You can do this in like sync meetings that you have, where you have action items or agenda items. You can create action items directly from that open-ended participation. So let's say you have this, I'm sorry for the sirens. Um, you have, you know, you're the manager or the direct report. And I alluded to this before, but you can make this a conversation. So love what you're working on. Here's some more feedback or, you know, notes from our one-on-one -on -one, and you can add them in here just for, you know, to have a track record of these things, um, you can, in a one-on-one, -on -one, it's probably unlikely that you're going to mention other people, especially if it's private to you. Like if I tried to mention, you know, this person and they're not a viewer, they're not going to be notified of this. So you can tag them for sure. Like say, you know, something you could say, I worked on, you know, task A with this person. Like you can do that. Anthony's not going to be made aware of this at all, but it's just a good way for you to tag somebody for your manager if they need to like follow up with that person or anything like that. And you can mention people from participation as well. But in replies, you know, uh, it's like, hey, I don't know. Let me ask this person. And then, you know, again, it's just a way for you to mention people, even if they're not involved in the flow, they won't see it unless they're a viewer, just FYI. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I kind of breezed over this, um, before, but kind of coming back to the value of why this process is so important, how this improves efficiency from a personal experience, my manager and I, we love to talk about, like, we can go down so many rabbit holes and like talk about really important and exciting product things but we don't, which would always take away from, you know, these like week over week measurements. And he used to keep, he used to ask these questions and keep it in a Google doc. And he would pull it up every time that we met, he just kind of had a Google doc for each of the direct reports. And that's, that's, that's completely disconnected from what we're doing inside of assembly, right? My task management, my daily standups, my project retrospectives, my, all my, my weekly sync agendas, all of those things, like that Google Doc has no awareness of any of those things happening. And all of those things happen in assembly. So first and foremost, bringing your one-on-ones into the place where all the other work is happening is one of the best benefits of this. But to my point about going down rabbit holes and not really getting the chance to address some of these things, you know, we've had one-on-ones, my manager and I, where we breeze through these like, you know, week over week questions and focus on the deep dive. And then sometimes I don't have anything that I want to deep dive in. And there's actually like, you know, as we're just organically going through it, things come up and we have a conversation, but this has helped us be so much more structured in our one-on-ones. Um, it has allowed us to focus on the right things. And, and the thing that I love, it's like the week over week accountability on my end and on my manager's end, like, you know, I've spoken to plenty of people who they don't use one-on-ones or if they do, there's no way to track what's talked about. And then you get recency bias. You forget about really important things that you've accomplished. Like there's, this is just a way, a, a paper trail for everybody to see what's been going on. So if there's ever any questions about, oh, I, did I smash my priorities? Did I like do a really great job or am I actually falling behind a little bit? Um, or if I'm not feeling great, like tracking that instead of just being like, oh yeah, I think they're doing okay. Um, so just this paper trail, I cannot tell you how amazing it is and how important it is to just be able to reference this at any point. 